In our study of harmonic oscillator, uh, we use the classical model. I'll just put a classical model here of you have some sort of a rigid stand here, some arm. Attached to that arm is a spring, and then attached to that is a mass. And we pull down on the mass, and the system oscillates back and forth. And we treated this system quantum mechanically. Eventually, we want to use the harmonic oscillator as a model for the vibration of a chemical bond. Let's, for instance, just take a diatomic molecule. And our model is that this diatomic molecule is connected by a spring. And the spring obeys Hooke's law, and it has a quadratic potential, and so on. This quadratic or this um, a molecule, this diatomic molecule, can move. It's free to move all around, rotate and vibrate and so on and translate. This model we want for the diatomic molecule is a little different from the model we used in deriving that equation. Here, this point is fixed. Whereas in general, we want the diatomic molecule to be moving around. One case in which this model would be useful would be, for example, if we have a surface of a, a lot of mass, so essentially it remains constant, we have one atom of the diatomic molecule bound to the surface, then the other atom is free to vibrate. This system, where you have one atom of a diatomic molecule absorbed onto an immobile surface, would be treated by this particular model. But in general, we don't want the one end of the molecule to be fixed. We want it both to vibrate equally. So how does one uh, translate uh, this concept or this model into quantum mechanics? Well, that's where the concept of reduced mass comes in. All right, what is reduced mass? It has to do with uh, center of mass. Uh, suppose that we have a diatomic molecule, and this is a very large and here we're going to bind it to a very small, large mass, small mass. And this, say, would be mass of particle 1, and this would be mass of particle 2. In physics, in introductory physics, you probably encountered the idea of center of mass. The center of mass would be somewhere near the large, heavy particle uh, relative to the small one. In fact, the center of mass, let's use one dimension coordinate, of center of mass, that coordinate will be a weighted average of the coordinates of the two masses. And the weights would be the mass of particle 1 divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2, times that position, x1, plus in position 2, we got m2 over m1 plus m2 times x2. So that's the center of mass uh, coordinates. And again, is weighted. So if mass is uh, very low for particle 1, or sorry, large for particle 1, and small for particle 2, then the center of mass will be closer to particle 1 because it has larger mass. Now, um, let's actually put in a sort of a pseudoparticle here. And this will be um, a particle at the center of mass. If we define that particle to have a reduced mass, We'll give it mu, and we'll define the reduced mass as m1, m2, the two masses, the product of them, divided by m1 plus m2. This single uh, virtual particle located at the center of mass with this particular mass, this reduced mass, will operate just like a harmonic oscillator, where one end is fixed. So that's why we introduce the, fa uh, the um, reduced mass. So pretend that it's these two masses are a reduced mass right at the center of mass. In that case, the uh, particle, this sort of pseudo or virtual particle at the center of mass with this reduced mass will behave just like in a harmonic oscillator. So let's do a couple examples to see if we understand that. Again, it's the product of masses divided by the sum of the masses. Let's look at the reduced mass in kilogram per molecule of H2. Okay. So H2, we'll denote that as a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom. And here is the bond between them. The hydrogen, the mass of hydrogen atoms is 1.01 .01 times, uh, actually 1.01, .01, let's just use gram per mole. 
um, although we'll eventually have to change into kilogram per molecule, we'll just lose gram per mole now. And the mass here is 1.01 .01 gram per mole. And we want to reduce that to a mass in between uh, these two, uh, locate in between these two, but note that these are equal uh, masses, so therefore we'd expect that the uh, center of mass would be located right in between this bond, equal distance between each atom. All right, so the reduced mass for H2 will be M1, which is 1.01, uh, remember gram per mole, 1.01 .01 gram per mole, divided by 1.01 plus 1.01, .01, all in gram per mole, and this is just uh, 1.01 .01 divided by 2 gram per mole. All right, so that's the reduced mass. If you have a diatomic, homonuclear diatomic molecule, the reduced mass is just uh, the average or half of these masses here. All right, let's convert that into uh, what the problem has, kilogram per molecule. So this is a gram per mole and we have to change to kilogram, 10 to the minus 3 kilogram per gram, and then we have to change mole to molecule, so this would be uh, 1 mole in 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, and this comes out to be uh, 1.68 times uh, 10 to the minus 27th kilogram per molecule. All right, so let's now, instead of having a homonuclear diatomic, let's look at a heteronuclear diatomic. Let's look at HI. So HI, uh, that is a hydrogen here, H, and now we'll put the bond, and here's the I, we'll draw a little bigger, I, I is more massive than H, so we expect that the center of mass will be closer to the I around here. Let's look at the reduced mass that we'd use right here at the center of mass. The reduced mass is equal to the mass of hydrogen times the mass of iodine divided by the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of iodine. That's equal to 1.01, .01. again we'll do this in gram per mole for now and change to kilogram per molecule later. The mass of iodine is 126.9 and then we divide by the sum of the masses 1.01 .01 .01 .01 .01 .01 .01 .01 plus 126.9. What we get is 1.00 gram per mole. All right, we look at that, hmm, that's very close to the mass of the hydrogen. So the center of mass is very close to iodine, and it's as if the reduced mass is just the mass of hydrogen. That sort of makes sense because iodine is very large, very heavy, so you can be, consider that to be the fixed object, and now you have just a hydrogen oscillating here back and forth, as if it were attached to a rigid uh, part of the, um, just attached to a rigid arm like we did for the original model in the classical harmonic oscillator. Well, let's continue this problem. 1.00 a gram per mole and then we have 10 to the minus 3 kilogram per gram and then we have 1 mole over uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules and that comes out to be 1.66 times 10 to the minus 21 uh, kilogram per molecule. All right, so I hope you have some feel for um, what reduced mass is. All right, so now that we know what reduced mass is, how do we incorporate that into uh, our quantum mechanical solutions? Well, um, ignore that for a minute. Let's see. Uh, remember, for example, we had omega is equal to the square root of k over m, and that was for the classical harmonic oscillator where the mass is attached to some rigid fixed stationary point. All you have to do is to change mass to reduce mass. So we can use everything we learned about the harmonic oscillator 
except uh, as long as we replace the mass with the reduced mass mu. This now is reduced mass. And we'll be replacing the reduced mass from the mass uh, throughout from here on in. We talk about rotators and also the hydrogen atom. So you have um, more than one atom or more than one particle. Replace the mass with the reduced mass.